I go to a lot of comic conventions, uh, and if there's one thing I can tell you about them after being at a lot of them over the years, they've changed dramatically. Uh, in a way, they're doing better than they ever have before. It's huge business, lots of ticket sales, an appeal to a broader and more mainstream group of people, but that comes at a cost, because at the same time, that propagation and mainstream appeal is also perhaps killing what they were originally and turning them into something else entirely, something that's less comic and more con. And not surprisingly, it's money that's doing it. Stick around. I'm Dan Umphen, and this is the Doomcast. First of all, do me a favor, hit subscribe and the bell. I make about one of these videos a week. They are all great, so please don't miss even one. I'm kind of revisiting this subject because I did a video last year on this same problem and I think it's worth discussing a little bit more. Now, just to summarize that, which of course you could watch here, um, in that last video I discussed how C2E2, a convention that I've gone to for multiple years, started out as a reaction to a phenomena of comic cons becoming more about pop culture and comics. Even an article in the Tribune in 2010 by Deanna Isaacs discussed how the renewed focus in C2E2 on comics is seen as a breath of fresh air by fans, seeing them broadly start appealing to fans of pro wrestling and TV instead. Of course, the comic con that they were reacting to was originally the Chicago Comic Con, which then became Wizard World, which is now Fan Expo. In any case, not striking out at any particular comic book convention, just discussing my most recent experiences here. So I say all that to say, as of 2024, now the 15th year of C2E2, something drastic has changed. C2E2 and conventions like it frequently had comic publishers, uh, both the big two, uh, Image, Boom, Dark Horse, smaller presses at every single show. Marvel and DC would make announcements of new publishing events, new creative teams, new animated and feature films. They'd debut trailers. It made international news. But as of this year, there was not even a single major comic press present at C2E2. And were there major comic creators? Absolutely. Uh, some of them, Chip Zdarsky, Jorge Jimenez, the creative team of Batman, uh, James Tynan the fourth, who I'm probably mispronouncing his name, almost sure of that. Uh, Ryan Stegman, Tony Daniel, David Finch, Stephanie Phillips, Alyssa Wong. Uh, but not one panel specifically about new Marvel or DC or even image work. There was one Boom Studios panel with James Tynan, uh, but by and large, there was very little comic-focused information. However, the bulk of featured guests were TV and film and anime once again. Josh Brolin, Hayden Panettiere, for some reason. Uh, Christopher Lloyd, who we can all agree rules the cast of One Piece. In fact, the bulk of the show was anime voice actors, positioned right up front for signings and meetings so close to the actual entrance that they managed to log jam people coming in. This was what was particularly notable. Not that pop culture stuff was there. It always has been. But anime, it seems, is bigger than ever and is bigger than it ever has been at this show. Which is wild, and of course, despite the Western comics are dying narrative, it's clearly not what's happening at all if you look at actual comic sales numbers. See people say this kind of thing on YouTube all the time, but it is absolutely true that manga is wildly popular, more than ever now. But this isn't a zero-sum game at all. Most Western comic creators are also manga fans, and vice versa. According to ICB2.com, uh, which tracks American domestic comic book sales domestically. Uh, $2.12 billion in sales for 2022 in print, digital, and trade paperback absolutely dominates the $250 million in sales of manga domestically per Publishers Weekly, but it's worth noting that that's still more than half of total graphic novel sales for that year. Of course, a ton of sites are focused on pirating manga, which isn't to say that there aren't also some pirating Western comics as well, but anime bolsters that industry in a way that film bolsters comics. I'm an anime fan myself. I'm also a One Piece fan, but I definitely don't see the appeal of meeting a voice actor or having a split-second meeting with somebody from Star Wars, although I have done that in the past, over, say, meeting the guy who draws the goddamn Batman. But with C2E2 this year, there are other things that felt like they were missing as well. Pre-pandemic C2E2 had a red carpet literally everywhere in the building. 
Uh, most of the convention floor it had the presence of major comic publishers, yes, but it also had little touches that were sadly gone and have not come back. Published paper guides were completely absent this year. They used to have a map of the convention, exhibitor information, even ad space. Uh, their apparel retailers largely were missing. There were even commemorative pint glasses that you could get at beer kiosks for purchase in previous years, also gone. Something about these missing pieces from what once felt like a major event, something very special, now makes it feel like almost any other generic pop culture comic convention that comes through you know, any mid-sized city uh, and features not that many comic creators, no real comic dealers, forgettable branding. Frankly, C2E2 has now fallen into a place of self-parody. It's not any different from any of the other mid-sized shows. It's a sad fate for what was once one of the biggest conventions both in size and importance to the industry in the country. That said, the snowball of multiple disparate fandoms into one amalgamated pop culture convention may not be a terrible thing, uh, at least for the short term, even if it does absolutely water down a lot of why it exists in the first place. It's definitely helping both the Western comics and manga industries, which ultimately aren't opposed to one another because neither is truly competing for the other's market share at scale or doing quite the same thing anyhow. Still, it would be nice to see an aggressive commitment from publishing companies to their publishing wing to be a force and a presence at comic conventions once again. Uh, you know, bringing news, announcements, and creators directly to fans. But part of me fears that executives at their parent companies see the publishing arms merely as intellectual property farms for adaptations and not something to cultivate. A fandom that builds a following. You know, a fandom so big that people go to a convention that's just for it. Anyway. Thanks everybody for watching. This has been the Doomcast. We'll see you next week.